So this is going to be an update to the story we've discussed not so long ago, actually a few months ago, where completely by accident, an amateur Japanese astronomer discovered one of the nearest supernova in the last 10 to 20 years. A supernova happening inside the famous M101 or the Pinwheel Galaxy, and a supernova that literally just began. And back then, a lot of different scientists and a lot of independent astronomers joined in to observe this in order to discover as much as we could about this, because obviously this is an extremely rare opportunity. And although it's not as close as the famous SN1987A, a supernova detected from the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud in 1987, this event was still pretty close. It was about 21 million light years away from us, making this one of the closest such events. So, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to talk about some of the new updates and some of the new studies that just came out about what was actually found here. Mostly because for supernova scientists, this was an exciting few months. Ever since the early observations in late May, for about two months now, quite a lot of different telescopes were pointing directly at this location. And this also included the SETI program known as Unistellar that involved tons and tons of independent astronomers from across the entire planet, with all of them providing quite a lot of data that was then combined together to discover a lot of things about the supernova. But even more intriguingly, one of the recent studies was also able to discover some of the older data from the Hubble Space Telescope that happens to have captured very detailed images of this months and years before the supernova happened. In the process, helping us discover a few things about this unusual star, but even more intriguingly, possibly pointing at some of the discoveries in regards to Betelgeuse. So let's talk about these major discoveries. So first of all, we know that this is the brightest supernova in the last 20 or so years. It reached the magnitude of 11, roughly around June 10th of 2023, which means that it was technically visible as a somewhat dim star if you were to observe this with a relatively small telescope. It was also confirmed to be a type 2 supernova, which is of course a collapse of a relatively massive star that usually leaves behind either a neutron star or a black hole. Although to be more specific, it wasn't really clear if it was type 2 P or type 2 L. In type 2 P, the dip in brightness usually pauses or plateaus before then continuing after some time. But type L generally dims with time and creates a kind of a linear function. These new observations do suggest that it's probably type L. And here it's actually interesting because it might help the scientists finally figure out the major difference between these two types. Currently the mechanism is not well understood. On top of this, the proximity of this supernova revealed where all of the energy and the brightness is coming from. Is most of it coming from the explosion itself, or is a lot of it a result of a shock wave as a lot of the fast moving material then ends up hitting the debris from all of the gas that was released by the star for thousands or even millions of years. And also, is all of this debris mostly spherical, or is the shape more irregular, possibly bipolar, and forming something else entirely? And so one of the first studies discovered that the shape here is definitely not spherical, implying that all of the ejected material seems to be more asymmetrical, or even potentially forming some kind of an hourglass. So maybe something like this. And so it's the interaction between the explosion and all of this gas that creates various shockwaves evolving supernova slightly differently. Which does explain why so many different supernova do actually appear slightly different, especially when it comes to evolution of brightness. On top of this, the observations from before the explosion suggested that the star in this case only seems to have lost approximately 1% of its total mass, forming all of this gas around the star, and that's extremely low compared to many other stars, such as for example Betelgeuse. With all of this gas obviously re-entering the galaxy, and at some point maybe even forming new stars. So that's basically a kind of a recirculation system that exists in a lot of different galaxies. But another major surprise was in regards to the size and the mass of the star. For example, if we take a look at some of the more common, more famous red giants that are expected to go supernova and produce black holes or neutron stars, they all seem to be much larger and much more massive. Our friend Betelgeuse, that's probably the most famous one, in terms of size is anywhere between 760 to approximately 1000 solar radii. In other words, about 760 to 1000 times bigger than the Sun, but in terms of mass, anywhere between 16 to 19 times the mass of the Sun, which is already considered to be a little bit on the lower end. Still, when it does explode, 
it's expected to create some kind of a neutron star, but this star was definitely much smaller. It was originally expected to be 1500 times the radii of the Sun based on the explosion, but it turns out to be only 420 times the radii, half the size of Betelgeuse, despite being more massive at approximately 20 solar masses. And so exactly why this red supergiant was so much smaller is obviously not clear either. Nevertheless, a lot of additional images produced by Hubble months or years ago revealed a huge amount of data about the star itself. For example, it turns out that it was most likely pulsating, or changing in size enough to dramatically change its brightness. Now, when it comes to various red giants, this is basically a theoretical prediction, but it's never really been seen in a progenitor star that would then end up in a supernova, literally confirming that pulsation or change in size in a red giant is almost a telltale sign before the supernova occurs. Here the changes in brightness and even the changes in size were by about 50%, with all of this happening during a 3 year period. And the final explosion, or the supernova itself, occurred when the star was inflated to the largest amounts, increasing in size by about 50%. Now the hows and whys are still not really clear, but these very dramatic changes most likely add to the instability of the star resulting in the eventual explosion. And this is a really important discovery, once again because of this guy, Betelgeuse. It obviously has been suggested that it has at least 100,000 or maybe even a million years left in it, but as you might have learned from one of the more recent videos, the recent observations in pulsations and certain recalculations did imply that maybe Betelgeuse is approaching its last days. Ok, not like last days, last days, it still has possibly a few centuries, possibly even longer, but there's a slight chance that it might go supernova within about a thousand years. But in this case, this is just an indication of how little we understand about these unusual stars. But chances are, by studying the supernova even more, we're going to be able to answer a lot of these questions. As a matter of fact, this is now the best studied supernova of the entire century. At least 120 different observers have already actually participated in this, with at least 115 different telescopes looking at this from various locations on the planet. Which of course doesn't just make this the most studied supernova, it also makes this the most studied supernova by citizen scientists or independent astronomers. One of the biggest such projects in the last few years. But this is just after two months of observations. The supernova is still visible and will most likely still be visible up until late August of 2023. After this, it's only going to be visible with some of the more powerful observatories. But technically, even now, if you wanted to join the Worldwide Citizen Science Network, and become one of the citizen scientists studying this, you still could. And so at least for now, these are just some of the first discoveries coming from this brand new supernova. We'll definitely be hearing more about this in some of the future studies, but even now you can find the 5 major studies in the description below. And so once we learn something else, expect another video. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.